Greetings and welcome. We are in Junior English. And we now turn to what many will call the document of all documents, the speech of all speeches. The Gettysburg Address, Abraham Lincoln's famous statement. There, next to the battlefield of Gettysburg. Now before I begin uh, to treat this actual text as a literary document, as a historical document, I want to pause for a moment and just answer the indictment that is often given to you and to your generation. Many of my colleagues well, and people my age will often say about you that you lack patriotism. By that they mean, I assume, that you don't understand totally what it means to be an American and because you don't understand what it means to be an American, you don't have the same kind of respect for your country that you should. About that, I'm not going to get into the argument. But I will say this, what I often say to my colleagues. I don't believe you're born patriotic, like the color of your eyes. I don't believe that. I believe that patriotism is something you choose as you age, as you mature. If it is the case that you lack patriotism as an individual or a group, I think that the responsibility for that falls directly for square on people like me, who are much older than you, who have given you no reason. Do you hear what I'm saying here? They've really given you no reason to choose to be a patriot. I believe that one close study of a document or two, I've said this, for example, in an earlier lecture when I talked about the Declaration of Independence, another text that I believe if you truly comprehend what's going on, you cannot help but sit up and take note, i.e., be a patriot, and say, what an amazing thing it is to be a part of a country called the United States of America. There's something quite remarkable about that. I don't know that you can appreciate that without given some reasons. So I want to give you a reason. The reason that I'm going to give today is the Gettysburg Address. A very short document, 272 words long, I'd write that down at level one, and it takes about two and a half minutes for the thing to be read out loud. Unbelievable. That something so small could have such a powerful, powerful statement going forward. But first, we got to start with history and some mathematics. I realize we're in a humanities class, but the math is going to be fairly simple for you, I promise. First of all, the history. The war that we call the Civil War, and of course the word civil simply means of or relating to the civil strife, the strife a house divided. That is to say, the northern states that were not in support of slavery at the end, and the southern states that had decided this is a point worth fighting for. That is to say, we will secede from the Union. We will create our own country. This is sometimes unusual to my juniors when they hear me say this. It wasn't called the Civil War. That was a term that we will attribute later in the time of the Civil War. It was actually called the War of Secession. To secede means literally a group of states get together and say, we will be our own country with our own flag, with our own borders, with our own rules. Now that was a debate that was being had long before the American Civil War broke out. In other words, do states have the right, if they want to, to come together and say, we will form our own country? The question of states' rights versus federal rights, the overall government. In the end, it took Abraham Lincoln to say, yeah, no, no. We do not allow individual states to secede from the Union and to create their own country. No. We will go to war to fight for the right that all of us have to stay together, united. You can see the irony. We're going to fight a war that will separate our country to prove our country has to stay together. It is an irony. It's one of many ironies. The darkest ironies of the war have to do with death toll. For example, I'll just give you a little bit of mathematics to work with. For example, let's do this really quickly. And I'm reading with you now on page 539 some of the setup to this. I'm thoroughly convinced that once you understand some of the background here, 
you will look at these 272 words much different than you could have ever looked at them before. And in the process, be careful, you might find yourself becoming a patriot. And the next time that you see the flag and you recognize what it means to look at that flag, it will maybe be rooted in an understanding of the mathematics we're about to work with. For example, take a look at this. I'm reading in the background here, the Battle of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, I'd write that down, that's where the battle was fought. Gettysburg is the name of an area, a small, a small area town in Pennsylvania. The battle was fought, we want to write these dates down, they are crucial and darkly, darkly ironic. July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, 1863, 1863, the war will begin in April of, 18, of 1861, so you can kind of do the quick math, how long this battle, these wars have been happening, this, the, these battles have been happening within this war of secession, which means that the Battle of Gettysburg ended on the 3rd of July, making the next day the 4th of July, 1863. And what's significant about the 4th of July? Oh yeah, that's when we shoot fireworks off. Well, no. The fireworks and the hot dogs and the burgers on the grill are related to a celebration of the Declaration of Independence, Tommy and his pals wrote, we hold these truths to be self-evident, all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. That document written, published July the 4th, 1776, I would write that date down, 1776, 1863, let's do a little bit of mathematics here. How many years are we talking about between Tom Jefferson publishing on July the 4th, 1776, we hold these truths to be self-evident, all men are created equal, and the Civil War's Battle of Gettysburg, which will end the day before, the 3rd of July, 1863. Do some quick mathematics to come to your number of years between those two dates. That's going to be significant, and you want to write that number of years down in your notes. Okay, so do the quick mathematics to write them down really quickly. Of course, we're talking about how many years? How many years? Four score, seven years. A score is 20 years. Got me? A score is a way to talk about a range of 20 years. A decade is 10 years. A score is 20 years. So four score and seven. Hmm. Got me? Number of years. The Battle of Gettysburg was fought in a very small region of Pennsylvania, quite hilly, quite wooded, for three days. Number of casualties, are you reading it with me? The Battle of Gettysburg, fought in July of 1863, I'm back to your book in 539, was an important Union victory. We want to write that down. The Union won this battle at level one. We want to write that down. The Union won this battle. That is to say, the Northern troops won this battle. This was a pivotal, pivotal moment in the history of the war of secession. What does that mean? It means that if the Confederacy wins this battle, it is altogether possible that the secession occurs, that the southern states are allowed to secede from the Union and to create their own country, meaning no more united states of America. The Union wins. It marked a turning point in the war. I would put that in my notes as well. The Battle of Gettysburg marks the turning point in the history of the American Civil War. So it already, already makes it a significant moment in American history. Keep reading. More than 50 
1,000 casualties, injured and dead, in the battle. But I want to give you some mathematics that are more significant. So let's write it down. You are working right now with me at level one. And you are simply going to write down number of dead for the Confederacy, dead and wounded, 28,000 for the Southern troops. Write it down. 28,000. Okay. For the Union, casualties were a little bit less, 23,000, which will get you your total of 51,000. Okay? Now here's our problem. Can I say this out loud without insulting you? Our problem is we go to history class and do worksheets. But somehow or another, the significance of events don't always hit our brain. <clears throat> Let's just qualify it as we're young and sometimes stupid. As in ignorant. That's all I'm saying. I'm not insulting. Let me give you a classic example of this. You just wrote down a number. 51,000. Let's do easy mathematics and reduce it to 50,000. Shall we? So go ahead and write 50,000 now down on your paper instead of 51. I realize there's more than 50, but let's just stick with 50, shall we? I'll go under the number. And I simply want you to do some quick mathematics to make you go, oh, you live in a town of 5,000 people, the whole town. I would write that down. 5,000 people in the town of Worland. I would write that down. I'm going to ask you to do some mathematics that will explain this in a moment. 5,000 people in this town. Question. In three days of a four-year war, in three days, how many Worlands died? Do the quick mathematics. 5,000 people live in this town. 50,000 people. And if you need to, you can do you can do the, the, the math on, on your phone. I, I don't care. You can do it. Do it real quick if you want to blow your mind. How many Warlands gone in three days at 50,000? If you're talking 5,000 people live in your town. Whoa. Everybody in your town times 10 in three days. In three days of a four-year war. It's not like on July the 4th, after Gettysburg is over, everybody goes, gee, 10 Orleans in three days. That's a lot of people to die. I guess we better pack this project up and call it the end of the war. There's still two years left of this war after this. The day after, they were still fighting battles elsewhere. We're talking about one battle in the history of a four-year war where ten warlords go away in three days. Ten warlords. Every single person in this town dead tomorrow. Imagine it. What would the media release be? If every single person in this town dead, that's 5,000 people. You think we'd have a few people show up to want to know what was going on? Do you think there might be one or two people that would ask, whoa, 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 how can that many people die in one day? You think? We're talking about 10 Warlands in three days. Three days. Now, this begs a question that I hope you're at least awake to hear. Don't you think one or two people would probably ask the question, why? <laughs> I mean, think about this. Don't you think one or two people would ask the question if ten Warlands went away in three days? Don't you think one or two people would go, whoa, 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 this is insanity. How can that many people get jacked in three days? Dude, what is going on here? How do you explain it? The numbers came back to Lincoln. 
and he was told, the North, the North won, the Union won. Lincoln said, how can you say 51,000 people in three days is winning? I, what, what are you going to say to that? Sorry? All the moms that are back home waiting for news from their boy, gone. All the wives waiting for news from their wives, coming home, gone. The brothers, sisters waiting to hear from, gone. What do you say to ten Warlands dying in three days? How do you explain that in your present United States? And they come to him and say, something needs to be said. Notice, it's funny what you learn when you start to read right. The Gettysburg Address on page 539, and then Abraham Lincoln, and then what is the date below that? Isn't it funny how you look at stuff and you haven't yet logged it because you just didn't know stuff? Now you start knowing stuff and you sit up and you go, November? November? November the 19th, 1863. November the 19th? I thought you said the battle was like in July. I did say the battle was in July. I said it was July 1, 2, and 3. Finished on the 4th. November? July? August? September? October? November? Four months later? Four months later, we're going to go, sorry. Ten Orleans died in three days. Four months later, we're going to go, sorry. Why did it take so long? Like, what? Why did it take so, like, why don't you just, like, say something right away? What do you say? Dude, I finally had the attention of one or two of you to actually ask this question. What do you say after ten Warlands die in three days? To explain it. To go, oh, oh, oh let me explain why this had to happen. Everybody in Warland times ten in three days. Gone. And you gotta explain it somehow. You gotta, you got you gotta give a reason. Lincoln said, I, I, I don't know. What do you say? What do you say? I've actually asked sometimes my juniors to sit down with a blank sheet of paper and say, okay, write it up. What would you say? Especially because they've never actually looked at this document of 272 words. What do you say to say sorry for 10 Warlands in three days? of a four-year war. It's one of the last people to die. When the first people to die. There have been lots of people before and lots of people after. Well, you would agree with me. That's a lot of people to die for something. We better figure out what they died for. And then we better celebrate that well. So November... This is what we're going to do. We're going to have a ceremony at the place where it happened. Ceremony? Like a celebration ceremony? No, a ceremony that basically says, sorry. Well, like, what are you going to say? Don't know the answer to that. We'll get a few people who can talk well, and we're going to let the President of the United States be one of them. Weeks before his aides come in to, Lin to Lincoln, the president, uh, what are you, you going to say at Gettysburg celebration? Lincoln, I don't, I don't, I don't know. What, what do you want me to say? Sorry? Ten Orleans in three days. Dude, what are you going to say to validate that this was necessary? And oh yeah... For four more months since it happened, we've been fighting the war. More guys have died. In the tens of thousands, more guys have died. Whew. But see, you're still not with me totally because I just haven't pointed it out to you. Funny how you write stuff down, but it just doesn't occur. What month of the year did this battle happen? Go ahead, take a look at it again. Right, July. One, two, three. What do you know about July in terms of, oh, I don't know, let's just call it heat. 
Dude, if right now you rounded up every single person in this town and took every single person out into the Badlands and put a bullet in them, that's only 5,000 people. Right now if you did that, would you agree with me? You would have to have a pretty good, right, area out in the Badlands. Would you agree with me? What kind of space do you need for 10 Warlands to get jacked in the middle of July? Some of you are starting to think, oh yeah, can you imagine the pileup of the bodies? It's not a very large place, this place, Gettysburg. You can visit it today, and any time people do, one of the first things they always say is, this is it? They look at it, they always, they're always say the same, this is it? This is like all of it? Yeah, it's not very big. Bodies started to pile up so high, we're told you had to crawl over them. Lots of people died from suffocation because so many people on top question. See, all of a sudden, some of you are starting to think, how long does it take to clean up the bodies of 10 Warlands in three days? <laughs> uh, dude, just start thinking about digging the graves for that number of people. Who's going to dig all those holes? I mean, you're talking about doing it by hand. There are no large bucket trucks to come in and start digging those. Uh -uh. Question, how do you separate all those people? On one side you have Union forces. On the other side you have Confederate forces. Well, one side wore gray, that's the Confederate, and the other side wore blue, that's the Union. By this point in the war, most of the guys fighting no longer had full uniforms of the right color. Whose job is it going to be to separate them? 